This video is sponsored by DeskIn, a remote access software which allows you to easily connect to any of your devices from anywhere and it works cross platforms. Whenever you need to connect to your device, remotely control your device or transfer files, DeskIn can do that for you. You can turn your iPad into a virtual screen for your Mac or PC and easily drag files from your PC to your iPad. With DeskIn, you can connect easily to your devices. Simply add the ID of your device or just choose from your devices that you have signed in on the list of the devices and you can have access to your devices from anywhere. You can also use DeskIn to easily transfer files from your Mac or PC to your mobile phone and that's very easy with a couple of clicks. You can just find any file you need and transfer it over to your phone from your PC or your Mac. Now, the best thing about Deskin is that it works cross platforms. So you can remote control your laptop using your Mac or your PC using your iPhone or your iPad. And it actually works pretty seamless. It's really, really fast with a high frequency, which makes the display looking really, really good. So go ahead and give it a try by checking the link right down below in the description of the video. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video. And it's been like a week now since the release of iOS 26.2 to the public. And of course it is a great update, bringing a lot of new features and changes for iOS 26 users. So in today's video, we're taking a look back at this update and I will show you guys some pretty the useful tips and tricks that I believe every iPhone user using their iPhone on the new iOS 26.2 must know and use on their device. Now, before we get into all that, I just want to ask you guys for a really quick favor. Most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy the videos and you want to see more of them, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. It will really help the channel a lot. Now we're starting things off with reminders. Now we have talked about reminders a lot on these iOS 26 point two videos but here's something you need to know which i believe is very important now as you probably know with ios 26.2 you can now add alarms to your reminders so the way to do that is tap right here enable the urgent and that will allow it to set a time which will also set off an alarm for your reminder but what's really interesting is that when you go to time right here, you can see that you will have here the hour and then you will have the minutes, but they are like on an increment of five. So you can set, let's say 17, five, 17, 10, and you cannot set any other number, but there's actually a way to do that. All you have to do here, if I'm on, let's say 17, 10, I do, I just want to set it at 17, 12, and I don't have the option here. Just tap again right there. And now you can go ahead and just top the clock and just add any exact time that you actually want. Now, here's another tip that you need to know on iOS 26.2. Let's first go ahead and turn on reduce transparency here on the device on iOS 26.2. So if you have this option turned on on your device and you try to change the look of the liquid glass on iOS 26.2, then it actually won't work, but it will give you an option to actually switch directly from here. So if I go to liquid glass and try to just move to tinted, you can see now it won't actually do it because I have reduced transparency turned on. So while having reduced transparency turned on, it won't actually work, but I can go ahead and switch to tinted right now and then go back and go here, go to display and text size, and then enable reduced transparency. Then go back, go to display and brightness. And you can see now we have the tinted enabled, but also reduced transparency. So if you want to do it, have both tinted enabled and of course, have or have the clear one it will ask you to just turn off reduce transparency if you use it but the way to actually do both of them is just turn it off switch and then go back and turn it on back again moving on to the lock screen here so here's something you need to know about the lock screen so as you probably know on ios 26.2 when you go to customize your clock you will now have this new slider that allows you to adjust the liquid glass effect on the clock that you have on your lock screen. But did you know that that will work not only on the transparent look, it will work with colors as well. So if I just change to a different color right there, I can still adjust the liquid glass effect 
on the clock while using a color from the basic of the colors that are preset here or just select any color you want and it again will also work with the liquid glass effect so that's pretty awesome another thing that you must know is a new setting that you will find for reminders so let's go ahead and search for reminders here So go to reminders under the app section on iOS 26.2 and you will find this right here. It is called complete from alarm. So you know that as we talked about earlier and we have talked about before, reminders now do have alarms. So you can complete the reminder and of course turn off the alarm. But you will have just one button to do that while enabling this button right here. So you tap the complete button on the alarm, it will stop the alarm as well as complete your reminder. And that's the most efficient and easy way to do it. You just enable it here under the reminder setting and you're good to go. Now with iOS 26.2, Apple has added a great new feature for AirDrop. Now you can stay connected with someone for up to 30 days via a pin code and that's very useful if you're let's say at work or somewhere else you don't want to like give out your contact to someone you just want to stay connected to them via airdrop you can now do that of course using that pin code but when you go to your settings you go to general and then go you go under airdrop right here we'll have manage known airdrop contacts you will automatically appear 30 days to people you have shared one time code with and that will be the list will be right here so from here what you can do is go ahead and manage that list if you have any contacts there you can go ahead and remove them so of course that pin will work for 30 days but it doesn't have to be 30 days if you just want to stop it after let's like, say five or ten days you can just go ahead and go right here and remove those contacts Moving on under the game app, so when the game app has been introduced on iOS 26, it brought a lot of new features, but something was missing. Right here in the library, we have now basically the features that we need. You can see here, I have only two games showing because I have applied three filters. So with iOS 26.2, we have talked about before these new ways to sort your games and also the different filters and categories. Now you can actually apply multiple of those. So I have here games that I have on Apple Arcade, support the controllers, and also are on the racing category. So you can go ahead and just switch from here. So you can see, I can switch the categories and still keep those other filters turned on. How cool is that? So you can choose basically all kinds of different filters. You go here, you choose anything you want, like let's say racing in this case, but also games that you have racing, but that are on your iPhone, or maybe that have controller support, you can actually apply more than one filter at a time, which is super useful. The podcast app on iOS 26.2 has gotten a lot of cool new features, and one of them is automatic cha chapters, and those will actually be available on podcasts that are longer than 8 minutes. So when you're on a podcast, just tap here, and then you will have this little arrow which will actually show you all the different chapters, and that way you can easily navigate through that particular podcast and find any specific topic that you need on a, that podcast it makes it very easy for you to actually move between like different sections of the podcast especially if you're listening to a really really long podcast and last but not least are free form tables so we have talked about this before now you can add tables of free form but you will also get like a lot of cool new features so you can see we can drag here to make it bigger or smaller, we have the plus button right here to actually add, like in this case, add rows. We have another plus button to add columns, which is really awesome. And we have here the view. We can go ahead and select here any column, any row we want. We can add a column before, after. You can see how many cool things we can do here. So there are actually a ton of things we can do. We can, of course, colorize any like columns or rows that we want it is pretty awesome the amount of things that you can do is pretty cool and you will have all kinds of different options here you can add text you can maybe attach other things like stickers links 
basically other files anything you need so you will have a ton of options to just edit and move all of these tables to add any way you like so that's basically it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful if you did smash that like button and of course subscribe for more and i'll see you on the next one